Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee. In today's episode, we're going to be kicking off our VGC Series 9 content. So, the rules updated on the 1st of May. We saw the rules change from Series 8 with all those restricteds like Kyogre Groudon. We've said goodbye to those and now we're moving into Series 9, which is reverting back to a Series 7 rule set that we've already played, already quite familiar with. Now, if you need a refresher on the rules update, I did a video on Friday last week just kind of overviewing the new rule set for Series 9 and kind of overviewing the, the, the format, the metagame going into it because obviously it's a format that we've played before and I ended up with a bunch of, I think, five rental teams in that video to help everyone get a head start. Now, that'll be linked down in the description if you do need that refresher or just want to grab some of those rental teams that we've already got up on the channel, then be my guest to check that out. Hopefully, it is helpful. But today... We're going to be kicking off with probably one of the more stronger teams from Series 7, at least in my opinion, especially from a probably one of the best Japanese players that we've had in the last year or so. So um, all their socials are going to be linked down in the description below. This team, obviously, there's a rental code. We'll have a couple of games with the team today. Uh, very exciting. Obviously, going back to a format without restricteds, it kind of opens things up a little bit more. We've got some nice options on this team. We'll have a couple of games with the team and end up with the rental code. So hopefully you enjoy this one today. We've got a nice mixture of Pokemon to hopefully kick us off into this format in good fashion. Hope you're enjoying the new format as well. Do let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Let me know what you're thinking about Series 9, how you're finding it, and uh, what changes you like compared to Series 8, if you do like it at all. I do really like to hear how players are kind of adapting and enjoying new formats. But without further ado, friends, let's get into our first match of today. <laughs> First up today, we have a team of Reggie, Alecki, Glastria, Cinderace, Togekiss, Rillaboom, and Feromosa. It's kind of weird going into Series 9 now. This is literally my first game in Series 9, going back without those restricted. But what's going on in this team? Um, okay, you've got some really fast defensive Pokemon straight off the bat. You know, the, Fer the Feromosa and the Reggie, Alecki are going to outspeed pretty much everything on our team. But we've got screen support on Grimmsnarl we can utilize. Um... And we've got ways to kind of get around those particular Pokemon and hit them for decent damage. Things like Moltres. Obviously, the, the Cinderace is a little bit of an issue because it can threaten our Spectre pretty hard. Um, but we do have Tapu Pini to kind of give us a little bit of a leg up there. But we've got to watch out for that Rillaboom, which is going to be a bit awkward for us to deal with. One of the things we could potentially do here is go Sylveon. Um, it gives us access to Yawn. Uh, so we can really disrupt and also with the hyper voice as well we can cut, put that spread damage onto the field pretty quickly and not worry so much about a lot of the other pokemon that uh, are going to be popping up let's just kind of give ourselves a refresh of this grim snarl see what support options we've got yeah thunder wave light screens yeah so it's a kind of standard set i think we'll need with grim snarl always a nice option here um it's whether or not we want to go with something like uh moltres because it's, it's it's a decent option um but I think Metagross is probably the one that we want. I'm going to go with Sylveon, Metagross, and I think we'll go Finny as well. Okay. Double Fairies for this first one today. See so how we get on in this first one. It's uh, it's always it's always nervy kind of going into your first match in a new series. Always. Doesn't matter what you're doing. And Mina Pledge on Showdown quite a bit. So I can't say it's my first match, of course. But on cart, on the ladder, here we go. We're, uh, we're premiering. Our uh, Series 9 right here. So going up against Feromosa and uh, Glastria. And you can know what's coming. The speed swap onto Glastria straight off the bat is uh, is what we're going to see. So I think we have to be... Probably go for a Reflect because I'm worried about Max Steel Spike. And I think we go for a Yawn into the Glastria. Because there's a good chance that it will potentially max here. Especially after the speed swap. Um, and you can see that's kind of what my opponent's probably going to go for. In this turn i mean it kind of screams that doesn't it so i'll be very surprised if it's anything other than that but that feels like what we're probably going to see now we do have metagross uh, that we can bring in but the problem with the metagross in this team is its weakness policy so we haven't got that kind of instantaneous kind of uh, attack buff to really put some damage on the glastria if we can put it to sleep though that that makes things a lot easier for us going forward of course we can waste some of those max turns and then you know it might not be as effective um, yeah, there's a Steel Spike, but uh, the Bibiru Berry, the Reflect, going to help us out a bunch here. Um, and the big thing is just being able to get this Yawn on too. Wow. I mean, we take that pretty well, don't we? So, that's nice. That's nice. Very nice. Very nice. 
the steel spike not ideal because obviously we were we're kind of planning if we're going to use metacross in this match to kind of hit it on that physical side which is uh which is not ideal um okay so we got to what can we do here i mean they're gonna go steel spike again so we could bring in metacross here uh but one of the things i prefer to do honestly is probably just um we could spirit break Pheromosa. The Pheromosa is so slow though, so it's likely the Pheromosa switches out here. But what kind of comes in for the Pheromosa? Maybe something like Toakis potentially? Um, I think we're pretty safe going for a Spirit Break here. We're probably going to take Max Steel Spike into Grimmsnarl. They're probably going to detect, like, they're probably going to predict us protecting Sylveon, I'd imagine, and go after the Grimmsnarl. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And they think, oh no, they go after the Sylveon again. But the thing is, like, we can't go for the Thunder Wave into the, the Glass Dray because then it, like, nullifies the ability for us to put it to sleep, which is such a waste of that first turn, uh, which is always tempting, you know? Not to waste that first turn, but tempting to kind of get that, that Thunder Wave onto it, especially after this, the Speed Swap. So, Pharaoh also taking a, a decent amount of damage there. They're going for the Poison Jab, doubling up into the Sylveon, and the Glastrier is finally sleeping, which is great. So that means we can Hyper Voice here, probably switch into something like... Uh, better to switch in Metagross at this point. I do worry about a weakness policy as well on the Glastrier, you know. Um, I mean, the other option is we go Tapu Fini, try and get some Calm Minds under our belt, and then kind of approach the match from that angle. I'm gonna go Hyper Voice here. Uh, we should still outspeed the Pheromosa, pick a knockout there, get some decent, well, we'll get some chip damage. Well, it's not so decent damage, because it's definitely not gonna be decent damage onto the Glass Rear, is it? Uh, but we don't have access to Yawn or Thunder Wave anymore, which is a little bit of a, an issue, of course, unless they've got any floaty Pokemon, which I doubt they do. Problem is with Tapu Fini, we've got to kind of watch out for something like Reggie Alecki, which could enter the field now, which we know my opponent's got. And gives us a few issues, of course. Uh, but we do have Mystic Fire that we can take advantage of with Sylveon. And now we know that the you know the Glass Rear is kind of just taking a nap. So we're, 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 oh it's uh it's in the race. Hmm. All right. Well Glass Rear not maxed anymore, which makes it slightly easier. Um hmm. Hmm. Do we just max with Finny and go after the Cinderace? I do worry about a bounce here, but like what are the options? What is the Cinderace going to do? I would like to get a Calm Mind up if I'm completely honest. I think getting a Calm Mind up might be a nice option. Do we just go for a Hyper Voice again? It's not really going to hit so hard, but they could go for... I mean we could switch in Metacross, but it's so risky against something like Cinderace, you know? Um, we could just protect. It's so passive though, but it kind of, I guess, catches the the, the, the Cinderace out. It goes max steel spy. Well, the iron head, I guess, is the best option, you would imagine. Or bounce. The Gastria yeah, taking another turn of sleep bounce, yeah. So, why I didn't really want to attack into the Cinderace here, because the bounce is like, you know, kind of obvious that they're going to go for that. And we do get the calm mind, which makes things a lot easier for us to kind of manage going forward. Because I think, well, we've got the option now where we can go after potentially the Cinderace this next turn. We can max go after the Cinderace, get the rain up, and then we can go after the glass rear the turn after that, which is probably the best way to approach this. Um, and maybe at the same time switch in Metagross, because you can imagine a heavy slam coming out from the glass rear. It'll help us preserve the Sylvian. Uh, going into this next turn just give us a little bit of room and then mm, probably switch back into grim snarl the following turn because we kind of want to keep metagross as, as healthy as possible uh for an end game because of the assault vest it does give us a better a way to to get around things like regulecky which could be kind of snooping around in the back so finny gonna come out as our maximum like i said the reason for going into cinderace here is because we're going to get a bit more power than the following turn onto the glass rear especially with the rain up so Glastria staying asleep again three turns of sleep get very fortunate there as a bounce comes out revealing the life orb which is uh, probably quite a common item on something like Cinderace 
But we are going to get the guys. Uh, we've got to keep in mind as well that the, you know the Glastria is 100% going to wake up this next turn. Um, and the only issue I could kind of foresee would be something like Regieleki coming in now, which would make things a little bit awkward. But we could max guard, potentially thinking that my opponent's maybe going to go for the double up into the Finny with the Glastria. Oh, but it's not. It's the it's the Tuga kiss. Okay, well, this is actually all right. This is this is actually fine. I think we stay in now, and I think we just go bullet punch. And we go Max Geyser again, because if they redirect, then we get it onto the Togekiss, and then it's pretty easy to kind of wrap up after that. We get Grimmsnarl in, Thunder Wave, and then go from there. So, very good game for my opponent. Uh, we get fortunate with the three turn sleeps, but it, it, it's how it goes sometimes, isn't it? So, we'll take that, and uh, we'll jump straight into our next match of today. Next up, we have a, well, a kind of a rain team. Politod, Dracovish, Togunamaru, Mantine, uh, Lola Marwak, and Stakataka. So lots of Y Guard, lots of Lightning Rod, and lots of rain. That's pretty much wrapping this one up. Um, okay, what are we looking at here? We've got uh, Speed Control, potentially Nuzzle. I would say 100% Nuzzle from the Togunamaru. Got to be careful around that for sure. But we do have Tapu Fini's uh, terrain to kind of help out with that a bit. Um, Wide guard, I would say, probably on Mantine. Um, does it get Tailwind? I want to say yes. I want to say yes, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, but regardless, you've got kind of Airstream as well, and it's like fully protected from things like electric type attacks. It would really kind of hinder it a little bit, but we haven't got any, so we don't need to worry about that in that respect. Then you've got a Trick Room switch with the Stack Attacker, predominantly going to be supporting something like the Marowak, you would imagine. Right, well, 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 how do we best approach this? I feel like Metagross is quite good here, especially with screen support, but it's not really got the offensive kind of um, prize that we kind of want. Sylveon's not bad. Um, you know what? I think we'll go Sylvia and Grimmsnarl again. I think it gives us a lot of options. Uh, we probably want Tapu Fini for sure. And I think Metagross again, you know? I do feel like Metagross is going to be... It's not really threatened too much, you know? Like, there's not really too much outside of the, the Marowak, which is, you know, if we're not in a Trick Room environment, it's pretty easy to deal with with, with, with Tapu Fini, especially if the rain's up, you know? So, I think one of the big things that's jumped out to me, um, or it's been quite surprising, like, not surprising, but it's been very noticeable for me, is just uh, how much it's... Like, I've enjoyed kind of going back to something like Tapu Fini and, and re really appreciating it. It's uh, it's use in this format. I think it's just it's such a good Pokemon, you know. Um, now, what do we do here? We just hyper voice, do we yawn? Do we protect? Uh, hmm. I think getting damage onto the board is probably a good idea, you know. Um, I'm going to just Hyper Voice and... I worry about the Togunamaru going for something like Iron Head, but the likelihood of it having Iron Head is, is not... I just can't see it. We'll go for a Light Screen. I, probably, if anything's going to max, it's going to be the Mantine, but I can't... Oh, well, here we go. It's going to be the Mantine. <laughs> it's going to start that Airstream abuse, I reckon. Um, I can't see it going for. I can't see it going for Max Geyser. Just Airstream, I think, makes more sense. But I've not really come up against too many Mantines, so I'm a little bit. I'm a little bit. Oh, I know what they're doing. They're going uh, weakness policy, aren't they? Weakness policy into the Mantine. Volt switch. Whoosh. There we go. <laughs> See it a bit too late, and then the Dracovish comes in, and then we, we get nailed for... Uh, but the thing is, right, if it is Dracovish, it's going to take a heck of a lot of damage from a Hyper Voice from the Sylveon, um, which which is alright, which is alright. It's, it's not the end of the world. And we got Thunder Wave, as long as the Togamora kind of stays off. Oh, it's going to be Todd. Okay. They're going for the Geyser, the Rain Boosted. Weakness policy boosted, guys. We need to put a yawn down onto that thing. Okay, they're going after Grimmsnarl. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. To get us. Wow. Okay. Well. 
and we do absolutely zip like Mantine's uh, special defense is phenomenal okay do we have room to calm mind because they're definitely going after Sylvia in this next turn I think we could get a yawn we could get a yawn calm mind um but the the yawn's gone now with the terrain of course can we do what can we do in this situation we can mystic fire but I don't really think that's gonna do too much change the rain that means Max and Sylvia now and I'm not really that fond of that idea I think we do they just airstream Finny here that's the, the big question you know actually we can yawn we can yawn because they're flying right so we, we yawn and we can't mind and we get something out of this turn. So there's a protect, which we don't mind. We like to see that. Good old Polytod. We're going geyser into Sylvian. If we can take this, this is huge for us. I don't know if we're going to be able to, though. Yeah, there we go. Sylvian taking it like a trooper. Trooper. There we go. That's perfect. Because now... It's still going to be very difficult, you know? Like, extremely difficult. I think the thing to keep in mind is that we, we really need to kind of try and keep Sylvian active because as soon as we go down to one, I like the two Pokemon, then something like Politoed really becomes a problem with something like um, Perish Soul. I think we go for, we'll protect Sylvian here. Don't know if it's worth it, but. You know, we're so low health anyway, and we'll hope that we can get the Toad plus one. Max Starfall, if we can, we remove the, the Perish Song threat. And it looks like it's going to be kind of, maybe, a Tapu Fini show today. But we'll see how we get on. This opening for us is not the best start. But we're, we're not out of it by a long way. we still got Metagross in the back. I think the big thing to worry about for us is definitely a Perish Song from the Politoed. Uh, so we get the Protect off with Sylveon. We'll see the Mantine go for a Geyser into Sylvia and it will probably pick up the knockout here. And I would imagine, yeah, uh, we'll probably see a Perish Song if we miss the knockout onto Politoed, which could happen. Politoed's such a bulky Pokemon, but we've got to believe in Finny. Oh, it's so, it's literally so close. If they get the Perish up here, we're done. We're done because I don't think Metagross can, uh, can deal with this by itself. They go for Skull though, so maybe they don't have Perish. We'll take that all day long. And now the Mantine will go to sleep. The Politoed will be um, in a knockout position for Metagross to come in. So we're not sitting in the worst of spots, in all honesty. And they've not went for an, a single Max Airstream. So we know the Mantine is definitely 100% staying asleep this next turn. Uh, we can Max Starfall into that. And we can just get rid of this Politoed for the Stomping Tantrum. Just in case something like uh, Tug Namoro comes in again. We'll go for a Starfall into the Mantine. It might have been better, on, in all honesty, kind of rock sliding here just to get rid of the Mantine because the threat of it, it is quite, it's quite a scary Pokemon. Obviously with Swift Swim, you know, it's going to be moving first. Still got the the weakness policy boost, you know. So it's still hitting. Like you saw how much damage it did to to Grimmsnarl. So it's still gonna dent anything that really hits. Now Tapu Finney's not in the worst spot here, but yeah, come on, be Togo tomorrow, please. Togo tomorrow. Let it be. Oh, it's Marowak. There we go. We like to see that. Okay, I think we can win this one from this point. Depends if we can pick up the knockout here. Like I said, Mantan's special defense is pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good, but we do have Bullet Punch that we can take advantage of the next turn. Just go for the Geyser into the Marowak. Because Bullet Punch should get the Mantine from this range. Well, like 100% it will. 100%. It's definitely getting it. Um, and we'll go Max Geyser into Marowak. And then after that, we've got Toga tomorrow uh, and Politoed. With a Muddy Water, I'll be able to deal with, with pretty much both of those, I would imagine, in the rain. Does the rain does the rain stop this turn, I think? Ally switch. Oh dear. Oh dear. 
forget about that. Forget about these, these, these moves. Okay, well, Mantine's staying asleep again, and uh, the guys are going to be the thing that finishes it off. Okay, so this kind of makes it a little bit, you know, it makes it a bit more tricky for um, my opponent. Like, if they bring in Togodomaru here, and if that Marowak has got Lightning Rod, then it's very tricky for my opponent to actually get any attacks off with um, with Togodomaru. Because they're not, they've only got single target, like they don't have discharge, right? So, yeah, that's this is the thing. You know, Polytog coming in, yeah, we're just a you know, we're gonna be able to just go muddy water and stomp and tantrum, and that, that should be enough to clear the field here. Again, I feel a bit like Rock Slide could, could also be a decent option, but am I right? gonna protect? I don't know why. Why? Why? Why are you protecting the Marowak? Surely you want to protect the Politoed over everything else. You don't want Togo tomorrow to kind of come in. It's kind of weird. Okay, the accuracy drop might help us out. Depends on the speeds, but Metagross going to add speed. And um, yeah, I mean, I don't really... <clears throat> Surely out of everything there, you want the, the, the Marowak to kind of away because now Togodomaru Togodomaru can come in for sure and just click the fake out button but we just double in like we just muddy water and stomp and tantrum into the Marowak because it's the biggest threat to Metagross right now um, and they can only fake out one target so there's not really yeah I mean we do pick up the win so two really convincing wins and Tapu Fini I will say has definitely been MVP of today's episode 100% very good game to our last opponent uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's episodes. We didn't really get to see the Galarian Moltres and stuff like that, but you know, this team is so versatile. It's kind of, we've got that really solid core of slowing things down, and then you've got the, the, the Finny to come in and just clean up if you want, and the Metagross being the Assault Vest gives you a lot of stability there. So we'll hop over now and remind you all of the rental code for today's team. Okay, friends, here is today's rental team. Like I say, we've had a good couple of games with the team. We've really seen Tapu Finny shine in this one. A bit unfortunate that we didn't get to see the Galarian Moltres, or really the Spectre in in today's episode which is a bit of a shame because they're two big hard hitters but it just kind of goes to show that the team can function super well without these pokemon in it and when the kind of the terrain or the the matchup kind of feels right then these pokemon can come in and do a really good job for you especially with the screen support and speed control support from the grim snarl which is like the you know i mentioned in that preview kind of video for series nine how predominant how good that is going to be as a support option going forward in uh, in this meta game and having answers for it and ways around it like psychic fangs like brick break things that get past it you know infiltrator ability uh, critical hits from crit case there are things to look at to try and get around grim snarl and, and prevent these screens going up and being able to kind of support team members so well but um big shout out to um to uh the team it's been a lot of fun playing it hope if you do try it out you have a lot of fun with it let me know down in the comment section as always i'm really looking forward to getting our teeth into series nine and kind of seeing how this format develops so we've got a long way to go before we see another format kind of pop up but we should get some news on that and i'd say a month's time to see what the next series will be but uh, in the meantime we've got a lot to kind of digest and uh, play around with there's lots of different things that we can do in this format i've got a really spicy team that will be thrown up in our next episode so do keep an eye out for that one thanks as always for tuning in hope you have a great rest of your day and i'll catch you all for another episode very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye